Timothy, uh, how much of a factor do you think fatigue, fatigue was last night? Uh, I don't think it was too much. I think, obviously, they had some long shifts in our zone that makes you tired. But um, I just think from the get-go, they were more competitive, uh, better uh, structure-wise, and uh, uh, didn't really get a whole lot going on throughout the whole game, I think. You mentioned some long shifts. Like, What's going through your mind at the end of the second period there when they're just cycling and cycling? Yeah, that obviously was a long shift, so you're just trying to – kind of pack it in and stand inside and uh, take away uh, any any chances on the inside. Um, yeah, they didn't score, so that was good, but obviously don't want to don't be out there for uh, for that, that long. How do you combat that? What do you take away from the game? Do you try and learn from it? Do you kind of throw it away as like, you know, it's uncharacteristic of you guys leading into the next one? Yeah, I, I think uh, especially as a D or the whole D where we got to do a better job of, uh, like, closing plays in the zone quicker and not let the forwards kind of roam around. Uh, I think that's a little bit what happened there in the second period. We didn't really uh, stop the play and let the forwards get around, and then eventually they're, uh, you know, you get tired, and then scoring chances, scoring chances come out of that. So uh, we just got to be more competitive, play, play more in the body, and, uh, yeah, just overall more competitiveness. How big is tomorrow, given what happened last night? Huge game, obviously, uh, because of last night, but also uh, divisional opponent, Boston. They've been doing busting to start the season, so uh, it's going to be, uh, be a huge game, and we need some response. What do you notice from Boston after looking into them this morning? What has made them so effective at this point? I think they're a good structure, structure, structure wise too. Uh, got good players, and I think they're just feeling it right now. Uh, so, uh, as I said, we just gotta gotta play good structure wise and uh, kind of stop the play and uh, make plays, uh, be more competitive. When you get to this point in the year and a team still is without a regulation loss, does that serve as a bit of a motivating factor to maybe be that first team that, that puts them in the L call? Yeah, I think maybe a little bit. I think more their their divisional opponent. We need we need to take points away from them, and we need every point we can get right now. So, uh, yeah, we need to uh, get our game back going, and um, uh, tomorrow's a good opportunity. Physically, how did you feel last night coming off the hit you took Saturday? You also took another big hit last night. Physically, just where you at? Yeah, no, uh, I feel good. Uh, it wasn't. Wasn't bugging me uh, throughout the game um, at all, so uh, I feel good. How much of a different feel is it for Boston without McAvoy and, and Grizzlick? Like, how much does that do you think change the dynamic of the matchup? I don't know. Uh, I haven't really watched their games, but uh, you know they're so good structure-wise. So I don't think you'll you notice it too much. But obviously, some good players out of the lineup. But um, we just need to focus on our game. I think. Uh, so, what was your uh, takeaway from from last night? Yeah, obviously not not great. I think uh, you know we felt and probably looked very flat, and um, you know couldn't just just really couldn't get much going. So, obviously, um, you know there's nothing we can do about that now. We got to take the the good, and mostly you know most of it was not very good, and um, we got a really good challenge for us tomorrow in Boston, and a team that's been playing really well. So, um, you know we definitely need a response out of the guys in the room. For you and Mitch, what's been the biggest challenge trying to get the, the offense going five on five so far this season? I think just the consistency. Um, you know, I think a lot of just one and done. I think we'd like to, you know, as a line and, and as a team, um, you know, generate more offensively and, and, and have more time in the offensive zone and not just uh, kind of these one and done. So, um, you know, that's obviously on us to work out and communicate and, um, you know, with each other and all five guys are on the ice and, and try to sort through that. Max, Tyler, and the new guys are. You know, trying to assimilate as best they can. The coaches are trying to help them. What do you think the the, the incumbent guys on this team can do to, to help them along the way keep their their spirits up? That kind of yeah, I mean, I think it's on us as well as the guys that have been here to to help in that regard and to continue to uh, set those standards for for everybody. And um, you know, there's been. Like I said, there's been good, there's been bad, and um, you know, I think just the consistency that we'd like to see out of you know the team as a whole. I don't think we've played nearly our best hockey um, so far. I don't think there's really been a game where we've put together like a full 60 minutes of you know rolling all four lines and just really solid all throughout. So 
um, it's something to work towards and, and clean up uh, in different in different areas. And um, yeah, like I said, I mean tomorrow is a really good opportunity for us. And those guys can hop on that train too. Yeah. Once the yeah. You mentioned tomorrow. Just how would you describe the significance of this game? I know it's early, but chasing Boston in the division, how would you describe the importance of this one? Yeah, it's it's important. I mean, these divisional games are obviously always important, and um, especially with how strong our division is and um, you know teams taking steps. So um, they're off to obviously a similar start to last year, and um, you know it'll just be a good a good challenge for us. And I mean, we're playing our next three four games against divisional teams, so they're obviously important points. When you get to this point in the year, and a team like Boston still doesn't have a regulation loss. Does that serve as a bit of a motivating factor to maybe be the group that enhances their first regular loss? I mean, I think we're more focused on our, our on our own game and on our own team, and you know, obviously going out there and putting it together a good 60 minutes and and uh, coming out with two points. So, so you signed a, another endorsement deal. I know that there's always a financial element to them, but do you like doing those? Do you like putting yourself out there with products? I mean, I think it's. Uh, I've always tried to be. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not specific, but just. Um, you know, pick and choose and be comfortable with, you know, the product, the company, everything else. So, you know, it was nice to you know, have this, something like this come along and, um, you know, it seems like a cool opportunity. So I'm excited about it. How did it come together, like with Logan Paul? Um, I mean, I'm not really in, uh, in the <laughs> situation. Yeah, I'm not really in that war room. So, uh, no, like, did you just hear like, hey, they're interested in doing something? Yeah, like yeah. And then, you know, just talk with my you know, agent representatives and just work through stuff and see if it makes sense. And yeah. What's it like navigating the schedule? You guys just had that long road trip uh, and now back on the road and it's, it's crazy busy before uh, you go to Sweden. Like mm -hmm. what's, what's it like managing levels? Do you appreciate staying off the ice on a day like this sort of thing? Yeah, I think today is just a good day for us to reset and, um, you know, take what we need. And um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, obviously that was a, that was a long road trip and, and coming home, it, it, it felt, felt really good to come home and then um, just right back to it. But, um, you know, that's the way the schedule works. Sometimes we'll have a good week and a half here before we head out to Sweden. But uh, these are important games, so it doesn't matter if they're home or away. We've got to be ready to play and, uh, and go from there. Your reaction to Jules Thornton deciding to retire? Yeah, uh, I mean, we joked about it because I remember asking him, um, you know, when he was kind of done playing, he was, said, I'm never retiring. So, um, you know, it was awesome uh, just to, you know, spend even one year with him. And, um, you know, we've got a great relationship. We keep in touch and, and talk a lot. So, um, you know, I feel really fortunate to have played with a lot of guys that, you know, considered legends of the game, Patty Marlowe. You know him, Spats, Geo, like guys that have been around that have had you know amazing careers. So um, you know it was a pleasure to play with him, and I'm sure uh, whatever he's doing next, it will be a lot of fun for him. Do you have a favorite memory? Um, I mean, there wasn't much going on in that COVID year, so um, but. We've, we've done a couple Vegas trips together, and, and that's been fun. Um, I mean, he's just such a fun guy to be around. He's, you know, always such high energy, and it gets everybody involved, and just so much fun to be around. Yeah, Leaf Ones kind of got ripped off in that COVID year because he was such a, he's such a personality, but they could really you know, like participate in that. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's too bad, but, you know, like I said, just, uh, just to have the opportunity to play with him was, was good enough for, for everybody in this room and the guys that got to know him and, and have that opportunity. So, um, yeah. Something in particular that you took from him, or you learned from him through that time together? Um, just, I mean, he was never stressed, which was uh, which was funny. Um, but I think just his mindset, and just every day is a new day, and just go out and have fun, and uh, that's just kind of the way he approaches life in general. So, um, yeah. Sheldon, we were just talking to Austin, and he was saying it's going to be a bit too much one and done for for his line of play. And I know Mitch has talked about wanting to shoot more. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? from those guys to jumpstart the offense five on five? I would say just, uh, you know, more speed, more execution with playmaking, uh, pay, overall pace. Like, to me, the playmaking is part of the speed and the, and, and the pace that would be generated off of that. And I think with that comes comes more sustained offense and more time in the offensive zone. Uh, you put your team, the, the opposition, on, the, on their heels more. And as a result, if a team's on their heels, it tends to be easier to get the puck back. Uh, so it's just that overall speed uh, and, and execution, you know, that hasn't been at the same rate. From a motivation standpoint, is there a better chance for a bounce back game than 
facing Boston? No, I think it's 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 pretty obvious, pretty apparent. Uh, you know, once again, the the class of uh, the the league, or certainly the division, and the uh, chance for us to go in and, and get a response, as you say. Um, you know, we've played well in Boston, and a lot of that is because we, you know, what you're in for. Uh, today's a, a day for us to continue our recovery and prepare for tomorrow. Is really what it's about. Uh, you know, weighing the you know the pros and cons of practice versus rest and and we opted for meetings and rest today and and uh we get a full skate tomorrow and we'll be ready to go when you've looked into boston um without obviously berger and creation this year they lost taylor hall along with some quality players but hasn't seemed to hurt them here they go do you have any ideas to why that might be well i, I think a big part of it is you know, for the most part, their defense is all is intact. Their goaltending has been the best in the league. So right away, that gives you a chance to win every single night. But I think they still have a number of really good players, great culture and great leadership, uh, and they haven't missed a beat, you know, for, for those reasons. So uh, in, in some ways, it's surprising, but I don't think we should be surprised at the same time because they, they just they haven't gone away, and it's a credit to, to the culture and the leadership that they have there and their experienced players just... Uh, continue to keep the high standard. You mentioned last night you weren't worried about how Joseph Wall would recover. What sticks out to you about his mentality, considering how young he is? Yeah, I think as we've talked about in the past, that, you know, he, that's his mental approach, his mental game, and his maturity uh, probably has been the biggest change or the quickest uh, development, you know, especially because you consider he has, hadn't played a lot, missed lots all, all of the training camp a year ago in preseason and uh, started the HL season. Yet, right from the, when he was healthy and getting going, he looked like he's grown a lot. And and credit to him because I think he really put a lot of time in his mental approach to the game while not being able to play. And I think for, I think he's just in a good place. So. You know, to that end, um, now, I also don't think he played poorly yesterday, um, you know, but it's the first little little bump in the road in terms of the number of goals against and losing the game like that. But, uh, yeah, I th despite being a young and inexperienced goalie, I feel good about uh, his ability to just handle that and move on. It's been a couple of years since Joe Thornton played here. I know you asked about him earlier, but Austin just said that his big takeaway was how relaxed Joe was all the time. Really, not that he didn't take anything seriously, he was just not ner nervous ever. Did he leave a stamp on this team, Joe? Yeah, I think that's what I, ta I, I talked about. It's just, you know, that he's, he is, enjoys every day at the rink, regardless of what's happening. You know, the NHL at times is a, is a daunting league, whether it's a schedule or the opponent or the expectations or whatever it might be. But, uh, you know, Joe's very consistent in, in maximizing and enjoying every day so I do think that there's part of that and uh, you know I think it's it was yeah such an unbelievable career such an unbelievable person and player so to, to, to have been a small part of that in a strange year you know through COVID and Canadian division and all that kind of stuff uh, you still you still feel pretty privileged to have been a part of it. Is there any chance you get Jake McCabe back this week? I know you Wanted to get him skating again? Yeah, I think I'm told he's not going to come with us on this trip. Uh, he may get back on skates tomorrow. From what I was told, I was told once he gets back on skates, they don't expect it to be a long uh, time to get back up to speed, given he hasn't missed all that much time. Uh, in terms of his availability for this weekend, I would call it unlikely at this at this point, but we won't rule it out until he gets on the ice and we know exactly how he feels. But he's starting to move towards the the day to day uh, category. And how's Connor Timmons doing his recovery? Yeah, uh, he's. I think today was just his second, perhaps third day on the ice here now. But he, and it seems to be going well. But he's a ways away from playing. You mentioned last night that in the list of worries, Austin Mitch aren't near the top. How much of trust has the, have those guys built up with you over the years, just in knowing their ability to, to get it going and still play at a pretty high level even when they're searching for it? Yeah, lots of trust, of course. Uh, you know, these are elite players in the league and. We're talking about them because you, you're ex, you're expecting such an exceptional standard that they have set, uh, even not at their best. They're still very good players, and they've been big parts of every win that we've had. Uh, so, like I said, uh, you know, it's it's early uh, for those guys. They've played a lot of hockey for us, uh, both this season and in seasons past, and 
Um, they're just going to continue to get better as the season moves along. Um, you know, we'll continue to talk with them and work with them. But uh, like I said, there's other things on the list that we're, we're, we're prioritizing more.